Okay, so uh, insyaAllah we'll have your uh, presentation starting this uh, next, uh, this Thursday, Kamis ni. We'll start with the LED uh, group. Make sure you uh, you make your friends understand of the LEDs and make sure everybody in the LED group understand everybody's job. Okay, so what's I can tanya cross. You'll be presenting and I will be asking cross people. Maknanya, tu saya dah beritahu awal lah kalau tak boleh jawab. If you cannot answer, then um, tak ada makan lah. Hmm. Another thing, I already, uh, some of you already requested for the quiz one. I already marked. I will now just share with you how do I mark. Okay. Uh, as mentioned, there will be only like two or three quizzes. Uh, there will be another quiz on uh, next week. Sama ada Selasa get ready lah Selasa tu Kamis next week It will be on uh, PN Junction Okay It will be PN Junction It doesn't mean that I won't ask uh, Yang lama-lama Maknanya the previous one PN Junction can be in accordance With the knowledge that you have before So bukan knowledge you out delete lah It can be used in the PN Junction as well So PN Junction and everything before hmm. Tapi the the main concentrations are the on the PN junction, the zero uh, forward and reverse, okay, and all the related um, mechanism uh, with the PN junction, okay. So that will be next week. So for this week, I so I will just share with you how do I mark. I think none of you got a uh, full mark. Um, I will tell you how, uh, how you get the, Okay, this is the question uh. So, you, you can jot down uh, the answer I won't jot down, I'll just tell you verbally How do I mark Okay, so these four marks uh, Give two examples of direct bank cap material There are a lot of direct bank cap material some, And I'm very strict when you say material, if you, you put gallium one as a night one, that's not one material. There's not one direct band gap material. So zero, you won't get even half. Okay, gallium arsenide is a direct band gap material. Gallium phosphide, indium arsenide. Um, okay, so two marks there. What's the main difference? Also two marks. One mark is to explain is that the, the minimum of the conduction band is a uh, uh, for direct band gap, uh, if you draw the minimum of the the the, the minimum of the connection band is in line with the maximum of the balance band for direct and opposite for indirect, you get one mark there and then one mark to say uh, which is the main difference, uh, one of the main differences maybe. Uh, sebenarnya saya bagi mark sebenarnya main difference. Uh, yang saya nak buat, uh, saya biasanya main difference saya tengok sebenarnya bukan yang tadi main difference ialah satu direct band cap material give out light in indirect band cap material give out uh, phonon so direct band cap material give out photon indirect give out phonon that is the main difference why the difference is because of the uh, alignment of the uh, band so so kalau rasa so nak pakai pagi i can give full marks by by only you are telling the apa photon dengan phonon tu tapi i also give marks if you explain about how the what you call it uh, the arrangement of the the band okay if you want to argue as i mentioned uh, you you can look at your paper if you think you deserve more marks you can argue with me tak ada masalah I, if I think your argument makes sense, I can increase your mark. If your argument is counterproductive, I may reduce your mark. So it depends. Lah. So it depends how you argue. So it's okay, no problem. You can argue your marks. Mungkin saya buat salah. Atau pun mungkin awak saja apa nak betul. So number two, in an intrinsic semiconductor, in intrinsic ah, the speeds of electron in the conduction band is. So intrinsic ke extrinsic ke it doesn't matter, right? Uh, the speed in electrons for intrinsic and extrinsic sama je. Uh, uh, the speed of the electrons in the connection band is 
Jawapan dia sebenarnya ialah sebab sebenarnya D. Tapi ada yang jawab D and E. Mula saya buat salah tapi lepas tu saya fikir balik uh, it makes sense lah kalau jawab D dengan E sebabnya sebenarnya when you say the speed of the electron connection band it means that the electron should be free. So speed bila ada speed maknanya electron tu free 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 carrier kalau kalau tak kalau it's not a free carrier you don't you won't have any speed so where where can you find free hole you can free, find free hole in the valence band so sebab tu jawapan dia D uh, and you know, it should be greater uh, electrons are faster than the hole so it will be D but some of you also answer E so kalau nak jawab kalau E saja tak betul, kalau D dan E saya accept lah uh, greater than, tapi sebenarnya tak betul juga sebab greater than the speed of holes in the conduction band hole dalam conduction band tak bergerak pun you shouldn't have any speed okay, so ramai tak dapat betul, saya rasa 2-3 orang je kot yang got, got this right number 3 uh, kejap lah Tak ada? Okay. Madam, uh, average score berapa ni? <coughs> average score, I think that out of 14 tu 9. 9 out of 14 tu berapa? Berapa persen? Boleh kira tak ya? 9 out of 14 berapa? Sixty four. Macam tu lah. 60 to 70% good average. Saya rasa paling rendah pun 9 kot. Hmm. So, so, kau tak silap. So maknanya it, does, uh, it doesn't mean that you don't understand. Tapi awak nak score. Uh, so Alhamdulillah you understand. Soalan pun kena susah sangat pun. But uh, it's good if you can score. Score dia tu make sure you tak tertinggal apa-apa point. Hmm. Any more question? Before we proceed, tak ada. Okay, so where did we stop last time? Do you remember? We stop at my question uh, regarding from the slide. Uh, from the side of the BJT, uh, the slide number. 49 and 50 the forward active diagram uh, the forward active mode diagram for the slide 49 and 50 uh, that that one I asked a question before that uh, why uh, the uh, slide on slide 49 and 50 di pasal apa? Sebab yang nak hinti tu. Uh, BJT forward active mode. Apa? BJT forward active mode. Oh, okay. Ah, uh, so okay. So we were talking about the the video that you watch, and I tell you to ask question, right? So the the I answer your question, tapi masa tu? Ah uh, no. Ah, uh, you ask me to look into it and uh, bring it up again this class. Saya tak dengar lah awak cakap saya seorang kenapa saya ke saya punya ni uh, dekat maksimum dah saya buat saya rasa. Uh, there is no answer given yet because it is at the end of the class and you ask me to look into it and ask again. Okay. So let me open the screen. It, it, it was based in uh, from the slide ke apa? Yeah, from the, the from your slide. Uh, slide 4 lah? Uh, for, uh, slide 4. 49 and 50. Uh, in which the Fermi level is aligned from 49 to 50. Ini ke? Uh, yep. Ni. Mm -hmm. So what was your question? Uh, my question is like how uh, 49 become like uh, the uh, how the image for the 
NPN, BJT, forward active mode uh, from slide 49 become like a slide 50. Oh, okay. I thought I thought you will understand. The, I, I thought you 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 watch a lot of video. You should understand how the how how the PN junction works, right? Did they not explain in the video? Uh, they did explain, but the uh the explanation that I got so far is until slide forty nine. But there is no people who align it the family align the family level back to slide fifty. Okay, so so there's no you haven't watched any video that explains uh it's in forward active mode. Is that so? Uh no no. Uh I watched in the forward active mode, but yeah, if you see slide forty nine and fifty. Uh -huh. And uh, for the from the slide forty nine. Uh, here, this one I understand, but uh, for the slide fifty, I haven't seen any explanation on this. Yeah. Fifty and yeah. Yes. Okay. Which is this fifty? Is the same as this one, right? Um. Ni uh, NPN This collector Ni pun uh, Zero bias Zero bias So yang ni, this one you don't understand Because of the Which line Semua ke Oh, so so this picture is uh, Equilibrium Is it? Uh, this is in zero bias. Oh, zero. Zero bias. Yang yes. awak duduk cerita for active mode. This is uh, uh, in order. Okay. How that? How do we make it in uh, active mode? How do we bias it to be in active mode? How do we bias it to be in active mode? Anybody? Uh, we put the BE junction uh, into forward forward mode and we put the BC into reverse bias. In reverse bias. Mm. So you forward the base to emitter uh, junction and you reverse bias the base to collector junction, right? So that's how you get active mode uh, for active mode. So the this is at zero bias, whereby it means that you didn't you didn't put any bias. Can P N junction you learn zero, forward reverse, right? P N junction. So uh, at uh, for P N junction at zero bias, all dia punya karakteristik mana mana je lah. Uh, any devices when it's at zero bias, it means in in equilibrium mode. Yang Afiq kata equilibrium mode and in zero bias. It can be equilibrium in forward active. So equilibrium in zero bias, uh, when everything settles down, the the main basic criteria is the Fermi level will be continuous. Biasanya saya draw Fermi level tu dotted line. Sebab, uh, yang ni tak penting pun, this just is to show that sebab bila kata NPN over here, NPN, this is no longer intrinsic, it's anti. So tak, per, tak, tak per, perlu pun lukis. Dotted line ni. So, if I were to, so, ni Fermi level ni, it's actually the the important ones. So, you can see this, this Fermi level is close to the connection band is N. This Fermi level is closer to the con, uh, valence band is a P. This uh, Fermi level is closer to the connection band is N again. But you can see the relative to P as well. Okay. So, uh, so you should be able to draw the Fermi level at zero bias too, and uh, with a reflection of the doping. Okay, did I answer your question, Afi? Yes. Um. Yes. Before, okay. because before actually I was confused because on the slide forty eight and fifty it looks slight different. That's why. Forty eight and fifty are. Uh... Hmm. If you look at it, it's actually roughly the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's why it's a little bit confusing. Mm -hmm. 
That's why I say my slides are confusing and cannot be trusted. <laughs> so, right. so read it with care. So, tapi dia tak salah. Kebanyakannya tak, tak ada yang betul-betul salah lah. Saya rasa cuma some meet some some discussion, which is good. It will make you think. Okay, any more question on PN Junction? Eh, sorry, BJT. Ni nanti ada ada kuis satu on BJT, you no? Know? Tak ada. Ada. I have a question. Okay, ni. Regarding the depletion region. Okay. Uh, at Elitor and this the depletion region is not the same. Elitor has uh, oh, my, my, my out pun tak okay lah dia. Saya suka saya. Saya tahu tu. I don't know why today everybody seems very tak dengar. Bercakap kuat sikit lah. Or maybe because I'm tired. Uh, I, hmm? I have a question uh, about the depression region. I see that the depression region at emitter and base tension is not the same. The depression region is it because function is not the same. Where where do you look at? It? Can you uh, can you draw somewhere or what do you mean? I don't uh, I don't get you. Where do you get that? I get that. You want to share your screen? You can. Uh, it's like thirty nine. It's like what? Thirty nine. Thirty nine. This one? Is it this one? Yeah, at the figure. Uh -huh. Okay, that's a good question. Yeah, that's it. Good question. So, anybody wants to answer needs question? And this question normally did I did on final exam here. <laughs> So, ha, siapa nak jawab? Siapa nak cuba jawab? Uh, what is the question again? <laughs> oh, sorry. Anas pun tak dengar. So, bukan telinga saya je lah. Okay, ha, ni kena kuat sikit. Uh, the depression region at emitter and this junction is not the same. Emitter has small depression region compared to base junction. Why? Okay, good. Anybody wants to answer? Because at the base and emitter we forward and then base and the collector we reverse. That's why we can see that the depletion region for the at the reverse side is much wider compared to the uh, base and emitter. Does that answer your question, Nick? Uh, is it also related to the doping? Because the emitter is heavily doped. And the base is uh, less doped. Or not related to doping. So basically, you are telling Mohaimin's answer is not answering your question. So, cakap je lah macam tu. So, Mahimin, you're answering another question, not his question. <laughs> but good try. Um, uh, I think you don't understand uh, Nick punya soalan. So, saya tanya orang lain lah. Dia orang faham ke tak? Ke sebenarnya uh, Nick dengan saya je faham soalan ni. Hazim, do you understand what's Nick's question about? Hazim Salam. Hmm. Uh, Nick asked about the depletion region that the emitter and base is not the same. Why? Kau dengar ke Nick? Uh, no. Hmm. 
I still can hear you. Um, me ask about the why, uh, why the why is the education region and the and the uh, and the base uh, is not the same. So what's the answer? Um, the answer because uh, because uh, because of the um, forward um, sorry let me check my Muhaimin awak faham soalan ni? Saya so, um, faham. Tapi saya terangkan tu apa yang saya, based on apa yang saya faham okay. Sebabnya tapi, sebab tapi, tapi okay, kalau based on awak faham, saya akan argue kan Okay, kalau ha. awak tu, I will argue Then, uh, so kata uh, based to emitter forward, based to character ha. Lepas tu nanti Meda akan argue kalau kita terbalik kan macam mana uh, ha. buk, uh, Oh, tak, saya Lepas. tak nak argue macam tu saya. <laughs> <laughs> I will argue is uh, okay. but, uh, but his question is nothing to do with the base to collector It's just to base to emitter tu yang yang doping Betul tak ni? You just arguing between the base to emitter The doping, uh, the depletion region To the, maknanya kita boleh kita boleh do it separately Base to emitter, mm -hmm. PN junction That is one PN junction So kita okay. tak ingat salah base to collector tu Base to collector tu is another diode which is reverse bias So if you look yeah. at the base to emitter which is a diode itself Tak payah tengok yang base to collector which is reverse Now we just look at the forward bias alone uh, Base okay. to emitter Kenapa uh, dia tak sama uh, depletion region thickness between the base and the emitter What do they do? Oh, oh. Okay, yeah. okay, okay Uh, itulah saya, saya, sebab tu saya, 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 saya tak faham soalan tu bila awak jawab macam tu So sebab tu yeah. need, need you need to do a harder job lah to make people understand your question Pada kita berdua dia faham Okay now um, So and Nick was ask, uh, asking that, Does it have to do with the doping concentration of each one? Yes Okay my answer is yes Now your task is to answer how And why? Why is it like that? Can I try? Okay, boleh. Siapa? Uh, Afiq. Afiq, silakan. So, uh, I think it's because of uh, when we heavily dope, right? On the heavily dope part, the density of the uh, the carry density will be much larger. So the depletion region will be smaller, and because on and then like. Uh, because uh how to say uh and then like the the depletion region won uh will become very uh, become smaller compared to the uh lightly doping region that's why we can see from the uh, the higher doping part it is smaller because of the uh it has smaller depletion region because of the carrier density why when you have smaller uh, higher carrier density higher carrier density the depletion region is smaller why uh because like uh everything that uh the been between like uh for the interchange to happen in between like n and p junction uh on the higher uh, because like china You want to sure. think? Okay. Yeah. I, I, okay. I, I All of you, I give you two minutes to think. You understand? Uh, do you understand the question? First, make sure you understand the question. Do you understand the question? Anybody doesn't understand the question? Let me know. Because I can tanya you. So, siapa kat sini? Merah ke? Uh, the answer. But if your answer shows that you don't understand the question, saya akan, uh, saya memang, saya akan kenakan awak. Ah. Because I already asked. Siapa yang tak faham soalan, tanya. One thing is to understand the question, number two is to answer But if you don't even understand the question How is it possible you're going to answer? Right? Saya pun perasan kalau, kalau you read my next time When you read the quizzes or the final exam of 
uh, semiconductor device, read the question carefully, extremely carefully. One word can give you a, a difference whether you pass or fail. Okay, so that's why you need to really understand what the question is about. Uh, and you need to PK betul-betul. Uh, so as I mentioned, course ni kena banyak PK. So ada soalan, anybody doesn't understand the question? Anybody don't understand the question? Raise now. Ni madam, uh, I, what I understand is that uh, he asked about uh, with the base diameter junction about the P and N, why the depression region at P is like that? Tak dengar dah. Tak dengar dah. Apa awak kata? Uh, he asked about why depression region in region P, P material is uh, larger than N material, right? Mm -hmm. But and then Afiq was saying, uh, was answering. Then my now the question that you need to answer is why uh, the higher concentration because uh, Afiq already answered partly. If you answer that in the final exam, I will give only 50%. So Afiq already answered partly, which due to the uh, the higher the concentration, the smaller the depletion region. Now the that is my my question now is why the higher the concentration the smaller the de the depletion region. That is my question that you need to answer now. Okay, everybody understand? Yes. Okay, two minutes to think. Uh, madam, can I try to answer? Ah, uh, boleh. Uh, I think it's because uh for because when the p injection is uh, formed the depletion region is caused by the diffusion uh, between the carriers right so uh if are you sure depletion region are caused by diffusion or, or is it double sided or, or recombination recombination ah jangan langit dan bumi tu diffusion dengan recombination okay so okay. can you okay. Huh? okay for the recombination to occur so the uh, the carriers the carrier that that needs to move is in pair. So for each each electrons that move from uh, N to P is equal to from to each whole uh, equal numbers of hole will move from P to N. So if the N from for the N have more electrons for or more free carriers, that's why the the depletion region is small because the the density. Uh, that's why I. I understand that from it because of the density of the free carriers in the in the injection. Okay, what do you think, Nick, with the answer? Nick? Uh, hmm. I think it makes sense. It makes sense, guys. Yeah? So, I think what do you think with the answer? Yeah. Yeah, means what? Uh, yeah, it's, I mean like that's what I'm trying to say. Okay. Right. Yes, it's correct. So, um, so you should be able to make another like fancy words to explain um, what Anas is, was trying to explain. Sometimes they use the word um, uh, the the. It, the the number of charges uh, from either side should be equal because when you do when you have recombination in the end uh, you are losing free carrier and you are leaving uh, what do you call it um, ionized atom I, this ionized atom become charges from either side so in equilibrium in equilibrium both charges at the either side should be equal. Okay, so so what the number of electrons hilang should be the the, the same uh, numbers of the whole hilang, but be, but because of the density are different, so therefore it will reflect in the uh, in the um in the depletion region because density of the doping high doping uh, will have a, a smaller space to give the same number of carrier to be recombined. Okay, so yeah, if you answer like that, you get full mark lah. In the exam. Any question? 
So semiconductor nak terlibas is tak susah pun. It's all common sense and it should make sense. Kalau if your answer doesn't make sense, huh? if anything that I say doesn't make sense, question me. So it means that kalau and it's not about magic or you know, apa, magical unicorn life where you cannot explain. When you're dealing with this, everything should be able to explain. If you cannot explain, uh, then uh, we must invoke some theory to be to be able to explain. So, tapi kalau benda yang kita ajar dalam universiti, biasanya semua patut boleh explain. Kalau lecturer tu tak boleh explain, maksudnya lecturer tu, tu tak faham. Hmm. Kalau awak tanya salah satu profesor kan, awak tanya, tak faham, awak tak faham-faham, doesn't make sense. Most probably the lecturer doesn't understand what he's teaching. Pernah juga jadi kat saya, mula saya ajar dulu, saya ingat my first year, I taught um, BLSI design. I never studied uh, BLSI design in my entire life. Saya tak pernah belajar. Uh, saya tak pernah mengajar. Tiba-tiba saya kena mengajar. Memang haru lah. I, I think I don't understand 50% of the class. Tapi I, I, you, the student can can sense. Saya pun, I being honest, saya kata I'm also learning. So after two, three semester, so baru saya macam. Sebab so, there's nobody who, nobody else at that time who can who can teach their lesson design at that time. So, um, a bit, um, macam itulah. So, maknanya, tapi sebenarnya kalau kita faham, kita boleh explain. Okay, so I'm very comfortable with actually semiconductor device. You can ask me any question. If I don't know, I will go and find out the answer. Okay, so anything should make sense uh, and should be logical. Uh, kalau nak jawab dalam exam pun macam tu. Kalau tiba-tiba dia macam putus kan. Tiba-tiba, eh, kenapa magically it happens? Ah, uh, Maknanya you are missing some marks over there. Okay, uh, any more question? Oh, kurang ni. 11, 20 tak habis lah. Okay, any more question? Semua, semua faham dah ni, BJT ni? Tak ada soalan dah? Okay, out, out faham. So don't blame me if you cannot answer in the exam. Now, let's go forward. So I, uh, you are supposed to already know how to draw, and why is it doped that way? So I takkan tanya kat sini lah. Saya tanya dalam quiz terus nanti. So, um, sebab aku tak ada soalan kan. Saya nak, I want to force you to ask question. If you don't ask question, you will suffer. Dia tak ada cara lain untuk untuk tu tukar this mindset of not asking question. And kalau takut pun daripada awak fail or you get a low mark in your quiz, you better ask. Awak can push yourself to ask. Hmm. And I will not entertain question yeah, privately. Hmm. Yes, Munira. Uh, why uh. doping of E or uh, from the this one, Venn uh, ben diagram, doping of emitter is Hilang lah Munira. We lost you again. Sorry, sorry madam. Uh, from the band diagram, we can see that the emitter is uh, closer to the covalence band, right? Covalence pula apa ni? At the end, the family level is more higher than at the collector. So why the uh, doping is higher at an emitter? Ask your question again. Make it clear. Why the doping at the emitter is more higher than collector? Okay. Anybody wants to answer? Because you didn't ask me this question, it means that you know the answer, right? The rest of you. So why the doping at the emitter is higher compared to the doping in the collector side? Both are N. Saya nak try meter. Ha, silakan. Okay, the doping at the meter, we need to make it a highly doping because from there we we provide the electron. Does that answer Munira? 
Uh, it does make sense because from I what I note in my note is because the collector usually have a higher voltage than uh, sorry, sorry sorry the ah uh, yes the collector is usually have the higher voltage than we lost you again. Sorry, madam. Dia, uh, ada orang tengah mesin rumput, madam. Oh, ya ke? Okay. <laughs> Rumah saya pun tak potong lagi rumput. Ha, teruskan. Menira? Because the collector usually have higher voltage than the collector. Sorry, madam. I can... How oh, type lah. You can uh, you can type in the chat room, chat chat area. Hmm. Everybody agree with Mohaimin's answer? My understanding was also almost the same. Almost the same. It's because like because we are transmitting from the emitter, so it's highly dope because uh, we want to make sure that. Uh, they are a lot of uh, the higher concentration. So of, why don't we uh, make the collector higher concentration as well? Maybe it's easier to make both high concentration. No? Because collector is main part is just to collect. So we doesn't need to make it uh, much more higher dope compared to the emitter. Hmm. Okay lah. Uh, I will give you uh, okay. <laughs> the, the, the answer. The answer is right. Um, but uh, maybe the way uh, you answer because the emitter, uh, because we are we are forward biasing the PN junction uh, of the base to emitter junction. So therefore, um, and this, uh, the, the anything, uh, any current that diffuses Okay, the diffuse and any kind of diffuse from the PN junction of the base to emitter will will mostly will be uh, will be what do you call it um, drift to the collector side and be collected. So uh, mainly uh, that's why the emitter have to be higher doped. The collector side why we do make it higher doping because it, uh, cost lah. Kenapa kita nak make it a higher when you do need to, right? So you can see they macam uh, the 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 apa, the doping of the collector macam very low. Um, the base the base region is it dope highly or low, and why? The base region. The moderate, moderate. Moderate. Hmm. Why moderate? Because. Oh, amik kat mana? Uh, bila tak oh, dekat mana kata moderate moderate dok <laughs> sebab daripada ni first year kan ha? sebabnya daripada first year first year dia kata ah. moderately dok ah okey ah, ah. okay. alright so actually uh, base as much as possible you want to make it low dok why Tapi kalau low sangat, dia tak nak like, jadi PN junction. So you need to have some P in order to become a junction. But you don't want to be high. Uh, you want to be as low as possible. Why? If you understand how BJT works, you'll be able to answer this. Kalau tak, awak yang tak tanya, awak yang tak tanya saya soalan on BJT, how it works. So, awak kena suffer lah. Uh, so answer my question. Why the base you want to do as low as possible? Tak ada orang jawab. Okay, I won't answer as well. So that's my question. Yeah. Huh? 
Ah uh, Munira Munira ada jawab. Cikat chat. Oh mana dia jawab? Kau mana cik cik? Oh, I'm sorry madam. Is it because the collector usually have higher voltage than emitter and emitter needs to inject current to please. Okay. Yang tu yang sebelum ni lah. Because to avoid more recombination. Yes, correct. Why you want you want to avoid recombination in the base? Because we need to diffuse the from the electron from the emitter to the collector. Because we have we the if there is a uh, more recombination, so we will produce low current. Eh, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, low low current lah, betul lah. Ah, uh, low low. Car current de tak banyak ah. Okay, let me ask again. Uh, why do you want to one? Uh, why we want to have less recombination in the base? Answer, it's a clear answer. Hmm. Try again. I'm not saying your answer is was wrong, but it's a uh, uh, tak 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 apa tak tersusun. This I'm teaching you effective communication. Better matter, at least I communicate. Yes, good. So you you pass the first level, which is com you communicate. Second level is uh, to be able to communicate effectively. Nanti kalau kerja pun, kalau nak bentang ke nak cakap apa apa, you will easier nak promotion pun bila awak cakap orang faham. So can you answer that again? Why we want to have less recombination in the base? Because we need to produce more current. Ah. So the electron can cross the collect can cross into collector. Memang electron can cross. It's just a it's a it's just a it's just the 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 proportion how much, right? If you see uh, IC beta equals to IC over IB, right? Yes. So if IB is high, it means beta will be low. Low. So you mean the gain is low. You want the highest gain possible. Therefore, you want to reduce the base current. If you want to reduce the base current, you need to reduce the recombination because you need to understand how you get base current, right? So you get the base current due to recombination inside the base. So if you make the P dope. Uh, you make the the base region p the p region in the base to lowly the probability again for recombination will be less therefore ib will be less beta will be high therefore you get more current more beta mungkin mungkin in there it also give more current tapi cara jawab tu kena bunyi scientific lah ha, ha, macam tu dalam jawapan tu ha, Sometimes it's, it's not wrong. I will give you mark, tapi you, kalau daripada 10 tu sepagi dah 9. Okay, alright. So, <laughs> um, uh, so basic, tapi bagus lah you understand, you need to understand. Okay, now what's the time? We we'll have 5 minutes. What minute is it? 10. 10. Okay, let's do some uh, stats uh, in the imported, important effects in BJT. Okay. First, we'll look at the early effect. I, uh, if you remember uh, from your first year, you have early voltage. Kalau ingat lah. Tak ingat lah, Madam. Uh, so, early voltage, you in your calculation, as, uh, your first year is all about calculation lah, mostly. Uh, theory sangat sikit. So, this is the, in, your, in your fourth year, you're understanding how do you get the early voltage. Uh, basically, uh, early voltage come from this early effect. What is early effect? Okay, this early effect. If you plot, okay, this is a graph of the, uh, um, IC versus VCE. Okay, uh, this is the normal output of a BJT. You plot the IC versus VCE. Ideally, ideally, it will, it should look like this, like this. Call this NPN. Then NPN. It should be straight there's not no changes even if you increase the vce vce the or the vbc 
uh, kita plot biasanya IC versus DCE. Uh, kita boleh juga plot. If you go to the lab, you can also plot IC versus BBC. Uh, the base to collector junction, uh, the reverse bias kan. So, um, it shouldn't change uh, with uh, the base to collector junction. Maknanya, uh, banyak mana you are emitted, banyak tu lah uh, the IC. It, will change. it shouldn't change with the base to collector voltage. Okay. Tapi, in real life, what you, what you see is this. Okay, you can see there's a slope. You plot IC versus BCE, or kalau yang ni kita tukar ke BBC, efek dia sama. You will see there's a slope. Uh, as you increase the BCE or the, the BBC, the base to collector junction voltage, the reverse bias tu kan, uh, it will keep on increasing slightly with a slope. And this part, uh, this uncle, early uncle, nama dia early, nama dia early sebenarnya, he, he found out if we extrapolate the slope, for the different uh, base to emitter voltage uh, it will come up to one point and this one point is called the early voltage so you can then put in this equation you can get the collector current based on the early voltage and the VCE okay so so early effect is not a is a sec secondary effect it means that the effect that uh, ideally it won't happen it shouldn't happen Tapi bila in real life, you will when you do any experiment, you will find out macam FIP awak lah, many doesn't work <laughs> according to what the theory is saying. So that is where as a scientist and engineer, we should understand, we need to find out why. And then we need to uh, be able to explain. So this person did the experiment and found out uh, dia macam ni. So how to explain this? Okay, so to explain this is because macam bunyi ada kat sini. It's getting worse. So, um, uh, early voltage. Saya rasa nak suruh cari sendiri ya. Awak pandai ni lah. Awak baca ni awak faham tak? Dua slide ni. Awak cedek-cedek kan? You are smart people right? Malu nak mengaku tak smart, so jadi kena mengaku, maka <laughs> So Okay So I think I will leave this to you to find out Go and read a bit, you can read here, if you understand this, memang you are smart lah If you read these two slides and you understand what it means You are smart, it's early fairly tak susah pun, uh, senang je so you can go read this or read the textbook that I already gave the, the the PDF before or you can watch some videos, the early effect. Dia tak susah. And uh, yang ni tak ada drawing. Um, I want you to draw. So dalam exam biasa keluar dia, dia early effect ni, biasa keluar final ke atau one of the quiz. Definitely keluar lah. So um, go and find and read and then We'll discuss this in next class, inshallah. Okay, early fact. That's so sad. Next effect is the breakdown voltage. Uh, in uh, PN junction, you also have breakdown. PN junction, but dah BJT. So, can ni sini IC versus V, EC or VC, dia naik gini gini gini, pop, and then you can see uh, uh, extra, extra pone, uh, exponential increase in current. And this is where you have breakdown. Why breakdown happens in BJT? Itu soalan-soalan yang kita kena jawab. Okay. And then, uh, what affects the breakdown voltage uh, inside a BJT? And then we'll talk about thermal effect, uh, which we learned before in PA junction. You have thermal effect. In BJT also, because it's semiconductor material, it will also have um, apa namanya, effect on thermal uh, temperature. Apa dia buat? Okay. And then we'll talk about base resistance. Um, um, ataupun kadang-kadang dia ada dua nama. The same thing, base resistance or emitter crowding effect. Base resistance effect or emitter crowding effect. What is it and why should we care? Kau boleh google lah dulu. Um, so it's important, uh, this and there are solution. You know normally engineers, dia buat-buat-buat dia jumpa problem. And they come up with solution. 
first to understand what is the what is the problem, why the problem occur, solution. If you don't know, if you don't understand why the problem occur, we cannot uh, provide solution. So, so as an engineer, that's why you're learning all this. Because once you understand, you will, sebab tu saya tak nak wafal, at least I'll be picking. You know, uh, because when you go to outside there, there'll be 1,001 problems. So, which you won't, the problems that you will never learn in this class. But through the thought process, you'll be able to think. I'll be picking. Uh, tu dia punya aim sebenarnya. Um, then in the end, we talk about ke effect. Hak ni yang paling susah. Ke effect ni. Saya pun, eh, I struggle to understand ke effect before. Uh, we'll have a, I will explain. Ini eh, definitely I will explain. Kalau saya kejam, saya akan suruh belajar sendiri. So, harap ni saya tak sekejam. Okay. Yang lain ni, mungkin tak cover. So, bila habis, uh, saya rasa we'll cover sampai ke effect saja. Then after that, we'll go through uh, MOSFET. So, habisan kelas kita. Sikit je. Okay. So, dia sikit tapi make sure you understand. Alright, so the early effect, go and uh, read, uh, read a, bit, a bit about it. We'll discuss it in the next class, inshallah. Uh, please get ready for your quiz too. Okay, uh, you should be able to draw. Uh, and explain in energy band diagram. Saya tak nak you explain dalam uh, apa nama ni bentuk-bentuk yang lain. Explain in terms of energy band diagram. You should be able to sketch it. Okay. With accuracy and full lab labeling. Yang tinggal satu label. Especially kalau makan dia banyak. Saya akan start potong makan lah. Kalau makan dia banyak. Dan um, aku tak buat. Saya potong situ, sini, sini, sini. sini. Uh, so make sure it's label clearly. The drawing. Okay. Oh, sebelas, jam saya baru sebelas, dua belas. Kita sepatutnya sepuluh dua puluh kan. Kita sepuluh minit ni. So, anything else you want to ask? No? Uh, Madam, about the, in the slide, ada ni, Iber Mall DJP model, is it important? Uh, tak dengar? The, in the slide, there is uh, Iber Mall DJP model. Is it important? Uh, for for this class, not important. Oh, okay. I will skip that one. Okay. Okay, thank you. Any more question? No? So, to end our class, let's watch a video. Oh, I want you to think when you watch this video. Nothing to do, bukan nothing, has not really uh, related to apa nama ni, uh, semicon. Tapi it's interesting just to open your mind. Okay, can you see? Boleh? Nampak? Boleh, boleh. So, saya kena share dengan sound sekali. Okay. Have you watched this video? Zuckerberg no. admits, Facebook does have tools to track its users across the internet. Across platforms, across accounts, all without user knowledge. I ask how many times this tool has been used domestically against Americans. Zuck won't say, wrote Senator Josh Hawley on Twitter, and then attached a screenshot of the internal tool. In recent days, my office was contacted by a Facebook whistleblower, a former employee of the company, with direct knowledge of the company's content moderation practices. And I want to start by talking about an internal platform called Tasks that Facebook uses to coordinate projects, including censorship. At the hearing, Senator Hawley outlined the use of tasks, a tool Facebook uses to improve the workflow of Facebook employees, but is also used by Facebook employees to collaborate with Google and Twitter in censoring users across platforms. Mr. Zuckerberg, let me just ask you directly under oath now, does Facebook coordinate its content moderation policies or efforts in any way with Google or Twitter? Ini adalah tanah rumah dan bangunan yang kita akan duduk di akhirat ketika mana kita datang bertemu. Senator, I think it would be better to, to follow up once I've had a chance to discuss with my team what any sensitivity around that would be uh, that um, th that might prevent um, the, the kind of sharing that you're talking about. But once I've done that, I would be happy to, to follow up. All right. So you won't you won't commit to do it here. We could, of course, subpoena this information, but I'd much rather get it from you voluntarily. But I think let everybody take note that, that Mr. Zuckerberg has now repeatedly refused 
to provide information that he knows that he has and has now acknowledged that he has that Tasks has under up. And a second tool called Centra that Facebook uses to track users even when they think they are anonymous. The discovery of Centra was apparently uncovered by a whistleblower. While the initial questioning about Centra was focused on how that tool could potentially have been used to sway voters in the presidential election between Donald Trump and Joe Biden, the assumed uses of Centra are still concerning to many users. Uh, Mr. Zuckerberg, tell me about Centra. What is the Facebook internal tool called Centra? Uh, Centra, I'm not aware of any tool with that name. Mm. Well, let me see if this refreshes your memory. There's a demonstrative now over my shoulder. Centra is a tool that Facebook uses to track its users, not just on Facebook, but across the entire internet. Centra tracks different profiles that a user visits, their message recipients, their linked accounts, the pages they visit around the web that have Facebook buttons. Centra also uses behavioral data to monitor users' accounts even if those accounts are registered under a different name. The dashboard shows a litany of data points Facebook has on individual users. And importantly, it highlights how users cannot easily escape the company's tracking, even if they wanted to. And you can see a shot here, a screenshot provided to us of the Centra platform. We blocked out the user's name in the interest of privacy, although you can see this individual's birth date and age when they first started using Facebook, their last login, as well as all manner of trackings. How many different devices have they used to ask, access Facebook? How many different accounts are associated with their name? What accounts have they visited? What photos have they tagged? And on and on and on. One such label visible in the dashboard, three device linked IG accounts, shows that Facebook can log the same user's activity on a device, even if they switch accounts by using the device's unique hardware identifiers, like a smartphone's fixed IMEI number. Basically, you don't need to be logged into a particular account for the company to know it's you. Create a new Instagram account, and device-level identifiers will be used to recognize you're the same person. When you log into Facebook on the web, the company drops a DATR cookie that will keep track of your activity even after you log out and for up to two years thereafter. When a Facebook employee accesses a user's private information, like their private messages or their personally identifiable data, is a record made of that, Mr. Zuckerberg? Uh, Senator, I believe so. Does it trigger an audit? Uh, Senator, I think sometimes it, it may. Um, How many audits have been conducted? Senator, I do not know the exact number of can audits. Can you give me a list? Um, Senator, we can follow up on, on, on that to, to, to see what would be useful here. It's been previously reported that Facebook uses browser cookies to track people who've never created a Facebook account at all, creating shadow profiles for those it hopes might create an account later. None of this is surprising, and Facebook is far from alone in performing this type of tracking. The entire online advertising industry is built upon it. In order to generate a detailed profile on individuals for the purpose of precise targeting, Facebook needs as much visibility as possible into your browsing activity across devices and platforms. If you switch accounts or use a smartphone and laptop interchangeably and your browsing activity doesn't sync across them, advertisers get much less information on you with which to target ads. Fixed identifiers allow Facebook to log user activity even if they've logged out or deleted the Facebook app or are using a different web browser. The scope of this tracking may still be surprising to some people, despite awareness that Facebook collects heaps of data. Critics have said that users might be willing to exchange their data for free services. But the vast tracking apparatus used by Facebook and others is so complex as to make it difficult for the average person to know the extent said he wasn't familiar with Centra, but a rose by any other name would smell as invasive. Mr. Chairman, I'll just say uh, in closing that what we have here is clear evidence of coordination between Twitter, Google, and Facebook. 
Mr. Zuckerberg knows he has the tools to track this, but he, won't, he either doesn't remember or won't commit to letting us see it. We have evidence of Facebook tracking its own users all across the web. Mr. Zuckerberg won't answer questions about it, can't remember the name, isn't sure if the tool is deployed in this way, and won't commit to giving us basic information. I submit to you that this is both totally unacceptable and totally predictable, because it is exactly what these tech companies have done to the American people and to Congress for years now, which is why it is time we took action against these modern day robber barons thank you mr chairman under oath okay so zuckerberg admit how do i stop this sharing mm, i think um have a think about the, the the video and what you do online and maybe you think uh, it has no effect to you but they can use that against you and against the country you know they will know everything that we like uh, for the we as a collective, as a whole country, you know, and or as a Muslim ummah, so we we are keep giving this free information to them, and they if they want to destroy you, 